little brute review tonight. Uh, today we've got some Red Wings, always a favourite on the channel. And these are the, the sawmills. They're the, in the Briar Oil Slick Leather. And they are the 2927 model. Um, really great to have these. I always know Red Wings are popular for the channel. And, you know, I absolutely love Red Wings. I've got lots in my collection. Great boots. But the other reason I'm really pleased uh, to feature these today is because these have been picked up from my uh, local boot store, Herring. Um, and they've just started stocking Red Wings, which is absolutely great. And to celebrate that, um, they've provided these boots for review, um, which was really, really good of them. And for, for my subscribers, for your viewers, um, there's also a discount code to use across their whole range in the, uh, the, the text below. So if you're looking for Red Wings and you're in the UK, or if you're looking for any uh, beautiful uh, formal shoes, um, please do check it out and you can save some money with that code. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you'll have seen Herring um, most recently with these superb uh, Windermere. Um, now these are really up due for an update, um, but having worked from home extensively this year, they've not quite seen the miles. So I'll be doing an update on these soon, but um, there's been a bit of a delay because I've just not been in the office that much. So as I say, um, Herring have sorted out these boots for review. Great, and I'm really pleased to feature them. Now the reason why I cho uh, chose a sawmill um, is really because it, it's a winter boot which has everything. Um, it's lined, it's got a Vibram lug sole, it's got a storm welt, um, it's just a really beautifully specced boot and, and actually got a few more features than your, your normal Red Wings. Um, one of the reasons why I picked the Vibram lug sole is um, because my 875s here, um, many many years of service on these, um, resold, Vibram lug, really like it, and I guess I just kind of wanted to see uh, how Red Wing would put together a Vibram lug mock, mock toe boot. And uh, also, as I say, those other features really did um, catch my eye. So in a moment, we'll go in and have a good look at those features and see how it's all put together. Um, brilliant quality as per usual, Red Wing, very, very robust boots. Um, but let's first of all, just start off on fit. Now these are actually uh, built on the same last as the, the 875, so that's the 23 last. Um, slightly surprised by that actually because it's got a, a, a very thin uh, wool insole in it and actually the last used for the 1907s there, um, which do have an insole as standard, they also have the Norwegian Stormwelt, uh, really nice boots as well. But they're built on a 45 last, which is designed just to give a little bit more headroom uh, to allow an insole and, and all that sort of stuff. So slightly surprised that they've gone with the with the 23 rather than the the 45, but um, they seem to fit really well. In terms of fit on Red Wings, I always go uh, true to size. A lot of people talk about sizing down half a size, sizing down a whole size. Um, and, and for me, maybe it's because I've got a slightly wider foot and in the UK they, they only come in the D fitting rather than anything like a double E or anything like that. So it might be because I've got a slightly wider foot, but for me going true to size, which is UK 8, US, US 9, is always the right way to go. Now what I would say is uh, one of my uh, Instagram followers, when I posted a little photo of these, did mention they, they believed these were a, a narrower fit. Now. Bearing in mind that they're on the same last as the 875s, I don't think that, that should be the case, but uh, if we take a look side by side, obviously these are five, six years broken in, um, but it does visually look a little bit narrower, and I think part of that comes down to the fact that the, the mock toe upper portion is cut a little bit slimmer. Obviously the, the, the width will break down and, and your foot will stretch that out, but it might just be that visual effect. Um, on the first wearings, I, I think they're pretty all right. But of course, as with everything on this channel, we'll do a full uh, lifetime review. And uh, the first part of that is obviously talking about break-in, and I'll follow this up in a, in a month or so's time. In terms of break-in, um, the 875's really, really challenging boots to break in, I think famously so, um, but that's largely down to the Oro uh, 
Legacy or Original Leather, I think it's called. Um, very, very robust leather, really, really nice, lasts forever, but it is hard to break in. Now these, they've got a much more supple, uh, oil-tanned, um, briar oil slick leather, and this, I think, will prove to be a little bit easier to break in. Uh, it's naturally softer, it's naturally more supple, and uh, I think it will yield to the foot. Um, certainly on the 1907s, um, breaking was a completely different experience on the 875. So don't let people's stories of the 875 scare you off Red Wings. Um, they all break in, some are harder than others, uh, but with any sort of boot, my principle is, is generally uh, little and often. So the first weeks you're gonna wear these, you're gonna maybe wear them around the house for a few hours, but you're not gonna do uh, a massive hike um, because you, know, you need the leather to yield before you can put your feet through that, to be honest, that, that's my philosophy. Um, one of the most important things about breaking with a boot, uh, certainly with the bellows tongue, is about getting that nice uh, seating back into the heel cap here. So you want to cinch down the, the lacing, and in order to do that, you really need to break in that tongue, break in the, that bellows, get it supple, and then your foot can sit comfortably at the back here, because that's that's a key area for comfort. You know, you need your heel to be tightly back in that cap. If it's slopping around, you might get some blisters. Completely avoidable, and uh, with a bit of care, you know, I, I very rarely have blisters. Um, obviously, with a mock toe construction, the seams can obviously sort of kink in and give you sort of toes a little bit of a hard time. But again, little and often, and you'll beat those, and these will be friends for many years to come. As I say, these are six years old and uh, they've had one resole and they'll be coming up to another resole soon. So, you know, with a bit of investment, your Red Wings will last you a decade easily. So, I think the next thing to do is to come in and look at some of the details. You're just coming in for some close-ups. The first thing to talk about really is the leather. This is fantastically supple, uh, oil impregnated, um, briar oil slick upper. Um, it's not really a pull-up leather so much, but it's uh, really, really nice and supple. I think it's going to be very nice to break in, a little bit easier than some of the other leathers um, Red Wing use. On the uh, ankle here, you've got a deer skin uh, padded collar, which again is a, another additional feature which you don't get in many Red Wing models, much more sort of functional. It's got almost got like a bit of articulation as the, the, uh, the padding sort of um, tapers off at the bottom there. So I think that's going to be quite nice, just providing that little bit of support. Um, but also comfort as it meets your ankle. Around the back here, you've obviously got a pull tab, which again, I can't think of any other Red Wing models that provide that. And there are a couple of firsts on this one, not least the, the D hooks and the lining, um, but yeah, something a bit new from Red Wing. Um, obviously on the rest of the upper, you've got the stitching, uh, good quality stitching as you'd always find on Red Wings. I don't think I've had any issues with the construction of any of my Red Wing boots. You've got the triple stitch, as the uh, the vamp meets the, the quarters here, and a double stitch around the heel cap and on the uh, on the back stay. On the toe you've got that uh, moccasin toe detailing, um, really really nice, like the look of it, um, very sort of traditional sort of heritage look. Um, just putting that side to side with the uh, 875s, um, you can see obviously there's a, a lot of breaking in to be done, uh, you can see how much wider the 875s have got with use. Um, but I think you know, there is a slight visual uh, difference in terms of the, the stitch around the top here. Um, but it is built on the same last, so it should break in just fine. As I say, a bit of difference as well in terms of the, uh, the lacing. You've got uh, D-hooks, uh, which I think is quite nice. You know, nice feature, and I think they're pretty functional as well for an outdoor boot. And obviously the speed hooks at the top, which just allow you to get them on and off a little bit more briskly uh, without sort of fiddling with laces through the holes and so forth. Uh, going down the boot, you've obviously got a, a full uh, welted construction, uh, which means it's completely recraftable. So they'll peel the sole off just by that sort of line there. You might not be able to pick that out, but the, uh, the leather welt's stitched onto a thin layer of rubber and the sole is just peeled back from that and a new sole structure is built, bolted on. Um, this is a, a storm welt. I don't think it's a full, what you'd describe as a full Norwegian welt because it doesn't have a second row of stitching. Um, but 
this will allow a little bit of extra protection from water ingress, just basically creating a skirt to keep the water and debris outside, out of the bottom part of the, uh, the leather upper there. And obviously the sole is that fantastic uh, Vibram welt sole, sorry, lug sole. Um, I wear my boots pretty heavy and whilst the uh, the white Christie soles look great and they are really comfortable, they provide a really good uh, level of support across the whole of the foot, um, these are absolutely rock solid and um, last an absolute age. Beyond this there's a little steel shank just to give you that support between the sort of heel and the forefoot and the, then you've got a cork uh, underlay and a leather insole and which will slowly mould to your foot. Moving on to the inside of the boot, there's a few interesting things to see there. So pretty unique uh, for Red Wings, really only a couple of models have this but having a liner is really quite good for the winter. Obviously it gives that a little bit of insulation, that extra bit of uh, warmth and this also wicks moisture away from your feet. Um, typically Red Wings aren't lined, they're a very simple and robust uh, construction but having a liner is really nice. Um, just on the tongue there you've obviously got bellows up to the the fourth um, eyelet so to speak and that will prevent uh, water ingress and just dirt ingress and that's another good feature for an outdoors boot. As I said before you know just breaking this in uh, getting the, the tongue sort of comfortable and, and so you can fully tighten down your boot is really essential to break in uh, just stop your heel slopping around at the back there. Beyond that in the side you've got a, uh, a felt wool insole very very simple but again another little shield or level of protection between you and the cold weather and underneath that you've got a, a leather insole which you could forgo that. I think on these I certainly want to keep that because you know these are my winter boot now. Um, but that leather insole will shape to your foot over time. And those will become a very, very uh, nicely fitting okay. boot. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of the review. As I say, thank you very much to Herring for supplying these. And if you're interested in buying Red Wings in the UK or any of their range, and I do think they ship internationally as well, they've got some wonderful uh, dress shoes and, and formal shoes and country shoes and stuff like this, absolutely fantastic stuff. 10% um, discount code below, uh, please use that. And, uh, and that pretty much is it. So thank you very much, I hope this is useful. Uh, of course if you've had these boots before and you've had any experiences with them, any uh, similarities between the 875s, if you do think they're, they're the same fit, um, if you've got any experiences of break-in or longevity, uh, please do share those thoughts and ideas. Um, if you thought this video was useful, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, I'd love that you subscribed. If you haven't seen my channel before, um, lots and lots of boot content, uh, quality denim, Japanese denim, that sort of stuff, a bit of everyday carry, fountain pens, pen knives, that sort of thing. Uh, please check it out. Please do subscribe. And that's about it. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.